Welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about nesting Flexbox and how you can use that to your advantage when doing a little bit more of a complex layout than the stuff we've been doing so far. Um, and this is something that I stumbled upon fairly recently, and it was something like this. So we had like a slider up here, and I just put an image there to kind of give you a feel for it. Uh, and then underneath the slider, we had uh, all of these items that were for each slide. So maybe there's four slides here, and then we had back and next buttons. And I wanted to use Flexbox because I wasn't sure how many of these items were going to be added. There might be four, there might be two, there might be three. And then I also wanted to make sure that uh, the arrows didn't take up as much space as the rest of them. So perfect use case for Flexbox. Where I ran into some trouble was um, I have these, if you just look at the HTML here, I've got this UL, which is going to be in my Flex container. And then I've got a LI, and inside of that I have a link, a pretty standard nav that you're going to find uh, in most web development scenarios. And the problem was that I wanted to uh, center these things both horizontally and vertically, um, which you might see like, oh, that's, that's perfect in Flexbox. But the problem became where I actually wanted the, see where I'm hovering? this kind of darker purple that is the link part because you want to be able to click anywhere on that darker purple so i wanted that to be stretch i wanted that to stretch regardless of how high like you'll see that this line this is three lines high and this one is only one so sometimes it's only going to be one line high sometimes it'll be three lines high and i wanted it to just stretch to the height of the biggest one which is something flexbox does very well uh, the problem with that is if you want to center them in that box then all of a sudden that purple box went from being this high because by default the align item is stretch and the align item went to center, which it was just the height of the actual content inside of it. So um, I, I asked around on Twitter and I, I finally figured it out, which is the answer to it is nesting Flexbox. So uh, what we're going to do in this code along is um, I'm going to start you off with, with the HTML and the CSS, which I thought we're going to run into the problem. And then I'm going to show you how we can both edit the CSS and the HTML. Uh, we're going to have to add one extra element in here, and we're going to show you how to how to fix it. So let's get rolling. All right. So what I have open here is our style.css and our index.html. These are just two kind of starter files. Um, and in our style.css, I've just got some base styles, so it looks pretty good. Uh, if you open it up in your browser, it looks like this. You should see that these things are sort of running together because uh, by default they're links and I add a whole bunch of padding to them. And because links are inline, their padding is going to overlap and not push them down. But not to worry, we're gonna fix all of that. Um, and what else I did here is I just took list style margin and padding off because by default, that's what a, a list looks like. So uh, let's get up and running. And the first thing we need to do is since these LIs, you see we're working with the UL, the UL is going to be our uh, flex container and the list items are going to be our flex item. So flex container, flex items. Um, and the way we do that is we say fl display flex. And what that will do is right away, it starts to look uh, quite a bit better. We've got all of our list items here and uh, they're really just taking up as much room as they need to. Uh, we've got a little bit of extra space right here and you can see a little bit of unevenness at the bottom. Um, and the way that we take care of that, how do we kind of distribute the extra space evenly? Well, we say dot slider dash nav li, which is our flex item. I'll, let's go ahead and say our first flex item. And then maybe up here, let's give ourselves a comment, our flex container. And I say first because uh, we're going to actually be nesting them in just a second. So, and the way we do that is we'll just say flex one and that will just make them all even. So give it a refresh and whoa, what happened? It starts to look like crap again. Well, um, when, when I don't know what's going on with my layout, my number one thing to do is I just put a tiny little red border around all of the elements just to sort of understand where they are. And I'll give that a refresh. And okay, this makes a little bit more sense to us where we've got these uh, list items and they're actually falling perfectly into place. It's just the links that are giving us uh, some grief. So uh, we are going to make these nested flex in just a second, um, but we're not going to get there just yet. So let's uh, say dot slider dash nav a. 
uh, and just say display block with 100%. And what that will do is, there we go. That'll just make things look uh, a little bit nicer so we can kind of see what we're dealing with here. So um, again, we've got our flex item, which is this. And then we've got our individual uh, links inside of that. Now, a couple of things I want to, to happen here. I want these links to stretch themselves entirely across. Um, and then I want the text to be centered both horizontally and vertically. And then finally, I want these arrows on either end uh, to be a lot smaller. So let's actually start with those arrows. We will go ahead and select each of them. Dot slider nav li dot arrow. I think that's it. Let's check our HTML. Yeah, we got a class of arrow and a class of arrow. Uh, we could have also said slider nav li first dash child and then also do a last one, but we got a class on there. So let's, let's stick with that. And I want these to be uh, about half the size of the rest. So I'm actually going to put flex one on here and then go back to our other one and make that a flex two so that the, these ones will take up double the room of the arrows. So let's see how we're doing there. Okay. That looks a lot better. Uh, we've got these two arrows being a little bit smaller uh, than the rest of them. Um, now I want to go ahead and center the text. So let's look at our flex items here and just centering horizontally is just text align center. We can do that pretty quickly. That looks good. Um, but now is where the hard part comes. This is where I thought I was almost done and I could just say like uh, align items uh, center and we'd be off to the races. So let's try that. If you remember from the one of the first videos, the align items goes on the cross axis. So if you remember from left to right is the main axis and the cross axis by default is top to bottom. So that's what we want. We want to align items because we want to center these suckers vertically across these, this axis right here. So uh, where do we put align items? If you're not sure, you can always head back to the CSS tricks article here and go and look for the align items property. Let's just take a look here. Align items. Here we go. Uh, and the align items, it looks like it goes on the parent, the flex container. So what's the flex container in our situation? Well, it's the UL. So we need to go back up to that and we'll say uh, align items center. And then this is where I thought I'd be good to go. Refresh and oh, well, that's not exactly what I wanted. Now, it depends on how much content is in there. Now they're just resizing them. So the default is something called stretch which is great because you can see on the list items, we're not thinking, talking about the links just yet. The list items are stretching as high as the highest one is, which is this one is setting the height of it. If we were to change that, like if you added a whole bunch more content in there, you'll see that the list items, all of them span the height of the tallest one. So that align items center doesn't really work for us because we still want them. We essentially, we want center and we want aligned items stretch. And you can't, you can't just do both, unfortunately. So what we actually need to do is do neither of these. And what we kind of want to say is the list items should stretch all the way. The links should stretch all the way. And then whatever is in the inside of it will vertically align itself. So what we actually need to do now is uh, use nested flex box. So this slider nav li, it is still going to be a flex item. Same with the arrow. They are going to be flex items. You can still append a flex property to a flex item. However, we can also make it a flex container as well. So we'll say display flex. So we say display flex and still flex too. So maybe we'll put a little comment there that says, this is flex item ish. So that's like a property that would go on a flex item. But then this, this is flex container ish. And when we say display flex on that list item there, give it a refresh. Ah, ha, ha. Now we're starting to get places where um, because we made this list item display flex, it is now a flex container 
And, and now what is our flex item? Well, if you make a can something apparent, a flex container, then the immediate child, which in this case is our links, they become flex items. So that's great. We already got a selector down here. Um, and this is where we can uh, take off all of that. And don't worry about that. We can just say flex basis 100%. And that, okay, good. So that, that got us a little bit further. We just took off that uh, temporary fix. And now since it's a flex item, we can use our flex basis. Uh, however, we still have the problem of the vertical centering. And we still aren't able to vertically center them. And I really wish we just had like a text align vertical right now and just save it and we'd be off to the races, but it's just not something that we have in CSS. So what we could try is we could try um, align or on our list item, we say align items center, and maybe that will center it. It does, but then we still have the problem of these uh, items since they're not by default, they're stretch. We're, we're, by saying this, we're saying the links, these guys right here need to stretch, but that still doesn't work. It's it's similar. We And then maybe you think, oh, well, we also have one called align self. Could we say align self center? And no, that does the same thing. That just tells the list item to align itself in the center of the parent. So again, we're in the situation where we want, maybe we'll put a little comment. We want to stretch as well as center. So we need to go one step further and do another display flex. Now, if we say display flex on this one right here and give it a save, you'll see that, okay, good. This is, this is pretty much what we want. Uh, only now we've got a couple more issues. And when we made that display flex, let me bring that back. What it did is it stretched them all the way across. However, like look at the, our text line center no longer goes all the way across as well as the, the vertical centering doesn't work at all just yet. So uh, if we make the link flex, which is now a flex container as well as a flex item, we don't have a flex item that's inside of the link. Cause if we look at a link, this is just the content, right? So we don't have, any element inside of here that we can then apply our align items to. So this is unfortunately where we need to go ahead and add another element inside of this link. Uh, and then the easiest way to, to sort of do that is to uh, just wrap a span around all of the elements that we have. So I'm just gonna wrap a span around each of those and we will give ourselves a selector for that. So dot slider dash nav span. And we can give ourselves a little comma that says, this is the flex item. And on our link here, we can now say align items center, because when we say align items, it's going to take the child flex item and center it. So let's see where, where that brings us. Okay, good, good, good. Now we're almost there. Uh, I got a couple issues in here now. We've got, it uh, looks like these links right here aren't centering themselves. Looks like none of our text is centering us. And uh, we've got a little bit of a, a weirdness going on here. So what we need to do is because by default spans are display inline, we need to change those to display block. And refresh, that does nothing for us. Why? Because we need to give it a width of a hundred percent. Okay. Getting there, getting there. Our one last little issue that we have here is like, what's going on with this one? Why is, why is it kind of wrapping around here? Um, and I'm not actually sure what's going on here. Probably a little bug on my end. You're probably yelling at me right now. I say it's super clear. Oh, there we go. So I, when I wrap the span around the text, I, it looks like I didn't get it all. So let me jump back to this one right here. Oh, and it's cause it was on a multi-line, make sure you put all the text inside of the span. And that should do it. Let me take off that little red ugly border there to make sure we're okay. And we're hovering it, great. Um, 
Maybe I want to add just some font size to the, oops, not to those. I want to add it just to the arrows. So dot arrow a font size 30 px. There we go. That's kind of the one nice thing about uh, Flexbox is you can just jack up the font size and you're not going to mess up your, your vertical centering on the items that are different font sizes. So I know that's a little bit uh, confusing to follow. However, if you ever run into a situation where you need items to both stretch as well as be vertically centered, uh, you have to do the whole nesting flex box thing. And hopefully this will be a pretty decent little starter template that you can pull out of uh, and, and sort of customize to make your own. See you in the next video.